Hi, this is Diane Love to Bake on YouTube. And what we're going to make is a cake. And it's going to be a large cake. It's a half a sheet cake. And the pan that I'm using, I want to show you. And you will want to go ahead and uh, grease it and flour or use your parchment paper. It's 12 by 18 by 2 and I always get questions uh, about that regarding the height of the pan so I'll just repeat it uh, again it's 12 by 18 by 2 inches um, high or tall and this particular cake is a chocolate cake but it's a deep chocolate cake it's very moist very light and really delicious and what it is is actually a base cake that I'm going to be doing two more videos on if you've ever heard of what's called a chocolate bumpy cake this is what I'm going to make but today in this video I'm going to make just the base of the cake okay um, and if you don't want to make a bumpy cake uh, you can use this cake great for church socials bridal showers baby showers whatever it's a delicious cake on its own uh, and you know to put your whatever frosting that you want on it or whatever this particular cake though what it will be in my second video is that you make a buttercream filling or frosting and it's actually piped in rows on the top of this uh, uh, baked uh, cake in fact, you will be, have to cool it down completely and then put it in the freezer for about 20 minutes before you even try to attempt to put the buttercream on. And then in the third video will be how uh, we make and cover it with all with chocolate. Oh, it's just a delicious cake. It's a beautiful looking cake once it's uh, finished. Uh, it is a bit time consuming. Uh, and a little bit you know of work but it's so well worth it if you give it a try uh, I think you're really gonna like it and like I said if you don't want to make the traditional bumpy cake the cake base itself is just a well it's a fabulous cake so anyway let's get started first what I'm going to do is we're going to put all our dry ingredients together and I'm just going to use my mixing bowl uh, to, um, you know, uh, to, to, to put that in. And I want to grab my whisk. I forgot to put that out. Now, I no longer put the recipe below or at the bottom of the video and I'm sorry about that. I'll explain later. Uh, but hopefully I'll go through clearly enough and slowly enough that if you want to jot down the recipe, you can. Okay, so we're going to first start off with five and one quarter cups of all-purpose flour. And I'm just going to put that five and one quarter cups into my bowl. Next, you're going to be putting in five and one quarter cups, the same as the all-purpose flour, into that uh, granulated sugar, five and a quarter, it bears repeating, into the flour. Okay, and I'm just going to start to just whisk it together. I could do this on my machine, but I just thought it'd be a little easier and quieter. <laughs> to do it by hand. All right, now to make a chocolate, of course, you're going to need two and one quarter cups of unsweetened baking cocoa. Again, this is not the mixes that you make hot chocolate with or anything like that. It is unsweetened. And again, I'd like to repeat it, two and one quarter cups. And then again, just start to um, bring it together, stir it together, whisk it together. It's a very big recipe. Um, I, I wouldn't even attempt it with a hand mixer um, beca because of the actual uh, product that's in here and there's so much of it. 
Um, I'm not saying it can't be done and creatively done, but I wouldn't attempt it. Um, I mean, your stand mixer is really, um, you know, where it's at on that, you know. Let me get rid of that. Okay. All right. Now, the next thing of the dry ingredients, you're going to put three teaspoons of the baking powder. Three teaspoons. Okay. And again, I'm just going to get to the bottom and give it some good stirring. All right. Next is we just put the three teaspoons of baking powder. Now we're going to put six, six teaspoons of baking soda. And yes, I did say six. And we're going to give that also a real good stir and get to the bottom there. All right. The last dry ingredient is going to be salt. Three teaspoons of salt. Now, once you get all that dry together and get it stirred well or whisk it or, you know, put it on your, your stand up and let your beater uh, blade stir it, whatever you prefer. Okay. All right, and there we go. We have the dry. Let me, let me just give this another turn here. Okay. All righty. Now, let's talk about the wet, and this is when we're going to start using our stand-up mixer, okay? You're going to be putting in three cups of milk. If you have uh, buttermilk, go ahead and use that. If not, just use uh, whatever milk that you have, or whole milk will work very nicely. But three cups of milk. After the three cups of milk is gone in, you're going to put one and a uh, one and a half cups of oil. Now, I am not going to tell you what type of oil because it really brings in such a discussion with people because one likes this, one likes that. So you decide what type of oil that you like to bake with for your cakes. And it's one and a half cups of oil. All right. And now I'm just going to just kind of give it a little bit of a spin. I want to warn you that when I start to raise the speed, it tends to be quite loud on your end. So I'll give you a warning when I'm going to turn it on at a higher speed so that you can, you know, uh, turn it down for yourself or be aware uh, that it might get loud for you. The next thing that I have in this bowl are six eggs, a half a dozen, and just lightly beat them. You don't have to beat them real well or anything like that. Just slightly beat them, and I'm going to put that in the mixture too. Okay. Now, the next thing that you're going to be putting in is three teaspoons of vanilla. And this is when I'm going to take my time and I'm going to start blending this and mixing this at about medium speed. I will be raising it a little bit only due to the video so I don't have to keep you so long, okay? So I'm going to warn you about the sound. time with it. I would beat it anywhere from three to five minutes or something, but I'm moving it along due to the video, okay? And I wouldn't be beating it as that high of a speed, more about a medium or a medium high. I had it all the way up when I put my towel over that, okay? And I'm just going to check now and make sure on the bottom, and it looks like it did come together pretty well, all right? 
Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to slowly start putting the dry into the wet and our very last ingredient is coffee. You need three cups of brewed coffee. It's preferable if it's hot. Uh, I just made some coffee and I had two cups pre-made that was still warm. I made a fresh batch and I took one cup of the very hot coffee that's in it, but it, it's still warm. But anywhere from, you know, warm to hot is actually better. It really does. I don't know. I think it just for me, I think it enriches the cake, uh, but it also makes the batter um, uh, uh, very thin, and you want it to be thin because it will come out very light and moist. So three cups. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to alternate the dry into the wet and then add the, the liquid, the three cups of brewed coffee, uh, you know, to um, you know thin it out as we go along. And I'm just going to grab a... A scoop here or a, no, a measuring cup and just start putting that in and I'm going to do it very low and this is time consuming but this cake is so worth it it really is Keep beating this cake too till it's all combined uh, for again another three or four minutes. Uh, you don't want to overbeat it, uh, but you don't want it under, you know. So, all right. So let me get this going. I think it's time that I start to put in some of the coffee, the hot coffee. When you're baking this cake, oh, the whole kitchen smells so good because you smell that rich uh, chocolate, that dark chocolate, and then uh, the, the coffee. Oh, it really does smell fantastic. Okay, I'm just going to lower my bowl here because I'm getting pretty high here and I don't want it all over my counter. And then again, it's time to add some more of the coffee. Now, if you have one of those shields on your um, mixer, that's, you know, very helpful, but I don't have one. Mine is an, an older mixer. And I'm just going to pour the rest of the dry here. Okay. And then we're going to add the coffee, the rest of it. a big batch, you know, I can't go too high with the speed because I, I'll, I will have like an overflow. As it gets thicker, then I can raise it a bit. Let me get a little bit off the top of the panel here. All right, and now I'm going to put some more of the coffee in. Wash there. And the rest of the three cups of coffee are in. Now, once you, you get it that you know you can raise it, you know, where everything's combined, then do raise your speed and beat it any 
anywhere from three to four, even five minutes if you think it needs it. said I generally don't go that high but I just I want to move it along for the video so oh boy I made a I made quite a mess here okay all right and let me get my paddle out of here and the bowl it's quite heavy because there is a lot of ba oh what a mess what a mess what a mess All right, I'm just gonna rinse my hands here. Okay. Alrighty. That way I won't have to look at it till I have to clean it. <laughs> okay, well we're gonna bring the pan around now and um, I wanna just take this paddle out of here. And I'm gonna show you the consistency in just a second. Okay, I'm going to just make sure and give it a spin and check that bottom where it tends to stick, you know. Alright, and I think I'm just going to whisk it just a little bit more. Of course I would have been at a much lower speed than that, but again I just don't want to hold you up that long otherwise videos you know it does becomes kind of boring and I don't want that to happen to you <laughs> watching my videos because I appreciate you taking the time and watching it okay all right let's get rid of that okay and then I don't know if you can see it or not in, in the at shot but it's quite thin, so I don't want you to panic and think, oh, I did something wrong, I, I, you know, I must have put not enough flour, whatever. You didn't do anything wrong <clears throat> at all, okay? Now, what happens, yet I had a little bit of spillage, so I might not have to worry about that, but it can almost be a little too much when I've made these, so I sometimes take anywhere from a half a cup out of the batter um, or three quarters you'll have to judge it uh, when you're pouring it into your pan uh, but I lost some on uh, my speed there so but you know pour it in if you feel that it's you know too much like I said then just reserve it on the side and you can make great cupcakes with it whatever um, I generally, to be very honest with you, I use it all up. And I find the cake comes out quite nice. But again, if you are troubled that you think that, you know, it, it looks like an overfill, and let's say that you fill your pan like now and you say to yourself, oh, it just looks like there's just a little too much batter, then take out that half a cup or whatever. Even once it gets in the pan, um, you can certainly uh, grab a little measuring cup and not touch the bottom of your pan and then, you know, use the batter to bake it for a little uh, couple cupcakes or whatever that you might get out of it, okay? Um, you, there, if you want to get a little bit of the bubbles to break, of course, you know, give it a tap and whatever. Now you're going to bake this cake at 325 uh, degrees. And it could take you anywhere, oh boy, uh, anywhere from 50 to 60 or 65 minutes. It really depends. I baked this cake at a friend's house and it took longer because, you know, all our ovens set up so differently. We know what our oven is like, like when we're baking. Uh, so, you know, I do. I start checking mine in about... Oh gosh, in about 45 minutes, I take a peek at it, you know, uh, and watch it because you don't want to overbake it. You don't want to dry this cake out, but of course, you want it uh, fully baked. 
Uh, now when it comes out, put it on your cooling rack. Don't touch it till it's completely cool because if not, it's so moist and so um, light. Uh, and fluffy it will crack it will break on you and the temptation is is that you know you you do you want to you want to move on you want to do the next step but let it completely cool I find it works best if you try it and you say hey I left it out for 20 minutes and it, it was great then that's fantastic but I usually like I said from m making mistakes on making this cake through the years uh, is that I like it fully cooled uh, on the on the cooling rack and if you're going to make the bumpy cake uh, after it's completely cool you will have to put it in the freezer for about 20 minutes or so before you start to put the uh, buttercream uh, filling or uh, topping in the rows uh, but again uh, if you're going to make the cake just on its own don't remove the cake till it's completely cooled uh, that's what I have found okay so again 325 uh, degrees uh, on the cake now I'm just gonna quickly wash my hands and then I would like to show you one that's baked up I've been working with raw eggs so I certainly want to make sure that my hands are, um, are clean before I attempt that okay all right and this is how it will turn out now if you don't take out the excess you know your cake will come up extremely tall like this one but if that worries you or concerns you as i said take out a half a cup take three quarters of a cup out yeah uh, if if you want uh the top itself will look um, where it'll look like it has texture on it so this cake definitely needs to have something on it whether when you're making a bumpy cake no one's going to see that because of the topping and the chocolate uh, uh, ganache that goes over it um, but and you could eat this cake plain but it's not real attractive on 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 the, on the on the top of it okay and in fact i um I'm getting it ready because I had it in the uh, freezer getting ready to work on the filling for the for the bumpy cake but it is an absolutely delicious cake uh, it really is it's very moist uh, and and lightweight I think if you try this recipe and I know it's a bit long but it's well worth it especially when uh, uh, your guests and and people comment how delicious this cake was well there you have it you've got a chocolate or dark chocolate base cake great on its own with other type of topping frostings or glaze or great for the bumpy cake that I was talking about. I want to thank you for watching Diane Love to Bake. If you're so inclined and you'd like to subscribe, well, I can't thank you enough. Or ring the bell. Thank you for watching. Um, oh, and again, I'm sorry that I don't put the uh, recipe on it uh, anymore on my videos. Uh, but And I'm not alone on this, that's for sure. But it gets very tiring when you... Uh, you know read comments or questions and I find my work on other sites uh, and it's so frustrating that I can't answer you so my videos are solely put on YouTube so if you have a question you have a comment I will do my best to answer in a timely fashion so thanks so much for watching Diane love to bake on YouTube stay well stay safe and I'll see you soon